to walk yeah. myself through. All right, we just started it. So um, just follow, so accept the terms. Check that little box right here. Okay. Perfect. We're gonna leave all of these checked. Um, so we'll leave them checked and click next and then install. Okay. Well, that'll be good because then I'll have this on my laptop at home too. So that's good. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I can work 24 hours. <laughs> Some days I think I come close to it anyway. <clears throat> This one takes like a minute to install. Um, once it's done running, a Plink will show up as a printer driver for you. So um, to, when you open up your PDF for your cords and click your print button, once you choose, you know, drop down your printers, it'll show mm -hmm. up for you. Okay. So are you in California? I'm in Oregon, actually. Oh, you're I'm, in Oregon. Okay. Yeah, I'm about okay. 30 minutes from Portland. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a pretty part of the country. Yes, I have grown up in Oregon, so I do love it. Oh, oh okay. So you're a native Oregon. Or I Oregon. am. <laughs> so is my husband, born and raised in Portland. Oh, really? Yes. That city's gotten a little crazy up there, hasn't it? It has. We did move a little further out because of the craziness. I've got a four-year-old and a one-year-old. So, um, Isn't that just so sad, Jessica, that just, I mean, you just look at that and you just think of just some of the places in this country that have just gone completely nuts. It really is. Uh, yeah. And especially... Especially when like people like you and like my daughter who have young kids and, you know, you just worry about all of that. Yeah. I mean, we have talked about, you know, wanting to go down to the Saturday market because there's a huge market that they have down there and taking our kids. I'm like, there's no way I'm taking my kids down there, um, which is unfortunate because there's a lot of great restaurants and a lot of great places to visit down there. It's just, uh, I, you can't catch me down there unless I absolutely yeah. have to be down there. Sure. All right. So Uplink is installed. Now we're going to do another uh, download. So if you scroll back up uh, under tools again, choose the last one, Weblink. Okay. So Weblink is a browser specific extension that allows you to bridge over duplicate data from Appulate into carrier portals that we have developed a connection with. So it cuts down on that manual work for you. So anything that is duplicate and appulate will transfer over into carrier portals for your submission. Oh, okay. Um, so if you click on get extension, it's super quick, just follow, it's like 10 seconds, a lot faster okay. than the other one. Mm -hmm. But this is browser specific. So if you use other browsers besides Chrome to quote, just make sure you download that. So if you use Edge or Firefox to quote, just make sure you yeah, download Yeah, I usually use them. Chrome. Okay. So. so up top, you'll just add to Chrome. Okay. And then click add extension. And you're all done. And you click that? Um, if you want to sync, it, it might work if you go back to the office to, if you have the same um, Google login for Chrome. Uh -huh. um, okay. okay, you do have to sign in to Google. Oh. I don't know if you have a Google account. I do, but I don't want to do that right now. Okay, that's fine. Um, so that's how you do um, the download. So oh, did I go too far? Yeah, it's okay. You can log back in. So um, it'll be on the video on how to do this. So once you do um, review this video and go back to do the web link, it'll be there on how to um, okay. do the download. Okay. Okay. So if you log back into Appulate, we'll go to the next thing. Okay. So I'm not sure how I did that to begin with. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Gosh. Just type in appulate.com. Okay and then dash sign in or slash, sorry, slash. Oops. Perfect. Okay. And then you sh there we go. 
Now, maybe that saved my password. Perfect. Perfect. There we go. All right. So next, we're going to review markets. So up top under that market tab, mm -hmm. click on selected. Okay. Oops. So selected markets, you want to think of as your agency's private library of markets. So you want this list to represent who you're appointed with. Are you appointed with these five markets? No. Okay. So to the right-hand side, we're going to start fresh. We're going to delete all of them. So if you click that little um, minus button to the right-hand side, mm -hmm. we're just going to get rid of all of them and do a fresh start with your markets. Now, when I, I've been thinking about looking at that Empire Underwriters, I must get 25 emails from them a week. <laughs> you know, Empire Underwriters is part of our open brokerage market. So um, oh. if you want to check that out, uh, agents have the opportunity, depending on the line of business, of course, it will show up and disappear. But um, you have the option to submit and get a quote back from them without having an appointment with them. So if you want to just check out their product or pricing or something like that, uh -huh. you can use that option and appulate as well. Oh, okay. Okay. That's good to know. Okay, so now we're going to add markets. Back up under markets is going to be an available option. Okay. Available, think of as the public library. It's everybody has access to all of these markets. There is a little search bar right up top. We're going to search for, so if you want to search for um, some of your, um, to, right above where the first market name is, down to oh, there. Here? Yep. So okay. if you want to type in some of your markets, your bigger markets that you work with, or whoever you want to add to your list. We'll add a few while we're on the phone. So are you saying like that? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and somebody is chopping a tree down outside, so apologies. Well, and I've got gardeners outside. My window, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the weather's good, huh? <laughs> yes, it is sunny okay. here. So Louisiana Pest Control Insurance, I've never heard of them. Okay, so pest control, is that um, uh, through directly or is it through an MGA or broker? Um, let's see, the one is, um, it's a direct appointment. Okay. And I think we might have one that's an, I'm trying to think. And I think they're both, they're both with Markel are the ones okay. that we have. There's more than two, but it, it's with Markel. Okay, so you write it through Markel. Right. Uh -huh. Okay, so type in Markel. Okay. They are definitely in our system. Okay, so to the right hand side, there's that little plus button. Mm -hmm. You'll just click it and it's added and it'll disappear from here, but it will reappear in your selected market list. Now that's Markel Global Reinsurance. I don't think that's right. No, not this one. You added the other one. Oh, so I did. It, yep. Okay. Um, so if you go back up to markets and click on selected, you'll see Markel now. It disappears from available markets once oh, you add it. Oh, got it. Okay. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, and feel free to go back to available and search a few more markets if you want. I'm, you know, it's getting into the motions on how to do things is how people, right. I feel, retain right. things better. So, you know, like I can think of, um, so Amwins, we have that one. And we've got like Burns and Wilcox. Um, so I can just go in there and add in the ones that I definitely know that I have. Yes. And then if I'm thinking I'm missing something, I could put the category of business in there and it would bring up the markets, correct? Oh, not the categories. Um, I can definitely send you the link on where, um, on how you can do that. Um, so right now, available markets for who you for sure know you work with, you mm -hmm. can do that. I will send you a link to um, search by uh, line of business. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would probably be good because there might be some in there that... No, how do um, I think Burns and Wilcox has the uh, symbol for and. So if you just... Oh, uh, do they? Okay. I think I wasn't so sure. in our system. Yeah, they pro that's how I always write it anyway. But then I thought, well... Okay. There we go. Okay. Okay. So I so so you so you just go up here and you go to available, correct? Yes. 
And then you type in the name that I know that I have appointments with. And then if I want to look at what is, a, oh, those are the ones I selected. Mm -hmm. And then, and then the selected is these, correct? Or available? Is available. So available, think of as the public library. So this will, this is where you will go to search for the markets that you want to add to your private library list. Okay. I'll make a note on that. Okay. And then if you scroll back up really quick, I think you can actually search line of business. Um, there is insurance line to the right hand side, a little drop down all the way to the right hand side here oh uh, no keep going and down just a little bit there's oh, a there drop down go. right here okay uh-huh um you can shoot there, oh, we, there go. we go okay all right so if we're looking for markets then this would be a good place to go yes okay so if you want to click on i don't know um uh, business owners policy really quick or I don't know sure. what line of business you typically write but um, it'll that. sort out through um, and it there's going to be a lot so I mean a lot of people write bop so mm -hmm. what I will do let me do something for you really quick hold on okay Truckers and motor carrier. We have a big one of those coming up. Okay. Now, Jessica, so when when these lists come up, these are companies that um, when we do the applications, they those applications can be moved right over to them, correct? Um, yeah, it depends on the submission style, which we will get into more on our second part training. Um, okay. um, and that's how you're going to be doing your submission. Um, okay. So that I'll definitely touch base on that. Um, uh, supplemental applications, accord forms, all that stuff when we uh, do our second training. Okay. I just put a link into the chat box in Zoom. If you want to open that up, so if you go into the Zoom up here, um, I don't know where your Zoom meeting is. There we go. Um, so that's my yeah, Zoom chat. I see it. Okay. If you click that link. Mm -hmm. So this is where you can um, search for line of business. So up top, there is a um, search bar. If you scroll back up. If you search, I don't know, whatever line of business that you want to. Oh, okay. Uh, it'll tell you how many markets there are. Uh-huh, I see that. Specific to those markets. Work Comp is one of our big ones. Package has quite a few. Uh-huh. Yeah, 62 for. I think Commercial Auto is another bigger one. Oh, yeah. How many do you have for that? If you go all the way up to A, it's under auto. Okay. There we go. 46. Yeah, because see. And if you click oh, on that, so uh -huh. click on auto commercial. It'll tell you the carriers as well as the submission style to the right hand side. Again, we'll get into submission styles next time. Okay. Um, but Appulate submission style just means everything is done in Appulate. So the rate, quote, and binding e-submission um they're partners of appulate but they still want you to use their portal so uh we've partnered with them to transfer that information from appulate into their portal web link is very similar to e-submission it's taking you to the portal but they're not technically partners of us of ours we've just mapped their website and then we have email submission which is just a basic email submission through our system okay so so when you when you look at the companies that are listed here, do you have, um, is there any restrictions if they don't write in a certain state? You will, so once you add your markets to your submission, that's when um, 
the market. So for example, the open brokerage markets that you can, you have access to those, that's when they will appear or disappear depending on the state. So we don't have um, underwriting guidelines in our system. Um, mm -hmm. You have to kind of go through the motions to get um, those to get to restrictions. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cause I know, I know in Nevada, we've got limited numbers of companies that write, um, commercial auto. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, and I'll okay. definitely show you the open brokerage markets. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So I wrote that link down. Okay. So perfect. Um, okay, so let's click out of this tab and go back into Appulate. Okay, so these companies that are listed are the ones that Appulate has the relationship with, right? Um, yeah, I mean, we you can submit to with an Appulate. It depends on what type of submission style. So to the right-hand side, you can see standard and upgrade. Don't worry if it says upgrade because everybody has access to this market directory. You okay. have the premium service, so you do not need to upgrade. It's just um, informing people that you have to upgrade in order to get web link and email. Okay. Because we have a free version and a premium version. Okay. Okay. I just made a note on that so I don't forget it. Okay, now where do I go? Okay, so we're gonna um, exit out of this tab. So up top, yeah, let's close this out, go back into Appulate. Okay, so the next part, if you go in the upper right-hand corner and click on your name, mm -hmm. down at the bottom, if you scroll down. Okay. So there is this market login section. And as you add more markets, more markets will be added in here. So for oh. example, Markel. This is where you can input your username, your pass, and your password for Markel for their carrier portal. Oh, okay. And what that means is when you're doing a submission in Appulate, since they still want you to use their portal, when you're doing a submission, Appulate will just automatically log you into Markel. It won't stop you and have you input your credentials. It will just oh. automatically log you in. Okay. And you'll definitely see how that workflow works um when i meet with you next as well okay now now like on um, <clears throat> because markel is a direct appointment mm -hmm. but like amwins and burns and wilcox i don't have a login for those because everything that we do with them we go through an underwriter and you email right 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 so if it is grayed out um it won't even let you put anything in that login part which it is it's yeah. not yep it's because it's not required so if it's grayed out it's just me it's not applicable to credential information okay. um amwins and burns and wilcox will still be email submission in our system but okay. i was an agent for eight years and email submission has probably one of my favorite features in it and i will point that out to you let me okay show that okay. to you so my companies like Markel and Hartford and Progressive and Safeco and all of those um, different direct appointment ones are where we can add our login credentials. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Scroll down. All right. So the next uh, last piece of setup, if you scroll back up, Okay. Under setup up top. Okay. Click on settings. The seventh option, mail server. Okay, set up. And what did we select? Settings? Settings. Yeah, okay. Okay. So mail server, it's the last one you see on this one. Uh, oh, go back oh. up, sorry. All the way back up there it is right here yes so right now your mail server is not configured which means that when you send emails out and appulate they're sent out on behalf of you i've heard a lot of times those emails go into people's spam folders so mm. we highly recommend people configure their mail server so if you click on that uh configure link and i don't know if you have an it person but uh, depending on what you use, your SMTP server, which you would need your server name with the port number, or MS Exchange, you would need the URL, and then you input your um, username and password for your email. Once you configure your mail server, 
emails will be sent out directly as you, but it mm. will also put a copy of the email in your email server's outbox. So it will go into your sent folder. Oh, okay. Even though you're sending it out of Appulate, when you configure it, it's connected to your Outlook. So it will go into your sent folder. Okay. I think... I think I have this stuff written down because I've had to troubleshoot so many times for our emails. We have somebody that hosts our emails, but I, I'm just so frustrated with them. I've I've paid so much IT time this last, especially this last month and a half. Mm -hmm. And everything that they've charged me for, like syncing up my laptop to my desktop, well, it, ne it really never was done. And so now I have to call them back and do it again. Yeah. Just stuff like that and just issues that come up. And so I have to find a different hosting company and I'm not sure where to go. Gotcha. It's something I'm going to have to work on. So I will. Um, so this is to. Uh, so sync my email. Yes. With Appulate. Yeah. Okay. And if okay. you click out of here, I just want to show you some other parts in here since there are two of you. If you scroll down just a little bit, mm -hmm. there are some permissions in here. So keep going just a little bit. You can add your logo if your agency has a logo, if you want. We do. Um, and then under security and permissions. So data isolation level right now is selected as high, which means you and Jack can only view what you what one of you has done. You can't share information. We always recommend, depending on what you guys want to do, is medium or high or low. I'm sorry. If you select low, you guys can work on each other's accounts if one of you goes on vacations, but you can actually see what each other has done. And I'm going to put that in there yep. because, because Miguel, Jack, <laughs> Jack will never be, he might be looking in here, but he's not going to ever be doing probably a whole lot because he hates computers. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> but um, Miguel, Miguel will be the one that I will be wanting to be trained on doing applications and that kind of thing. So I'll put that as low. Okay. Um, the other one that people tend to draw their eyes to is who can delete an insured. Um, right now it is selected as everyone. I don't know if that is an issue for you, but you can change it to admin users only. Um, that way, if something needs to be deleted, they have to come to you to actually yeah. delete it. Yeah. Now, um, when, when you add the logo, um, mm -hmm. how do you, is there someone that can help me with that or? Um, do you have one, like, do you have an image on your desktop, like saved or something like that? You know, I do. At, I don't think I have it here. Let me see. If like I a JPEG or something like that. Um, I know I have it in there. Um, I don't, I just don't know if I have it on this computer. Okay. I, and once you find it, you can either drag and drop it into that box or you can search for it by clicking on select. Oh, okay. Okay. And then what happens is your logo, if you scroll back up, you see Appulate 11 in the upper left-hand corner. It'll be replaced by your logo. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'll put a note down to add the logo. Um, are you by chance appointed with IPFS for finance agreements? Imperial Finance? Yes. Yes, we are. Okay. So if you scroll all the way down on this page, we have partnered with IPFS to kind of cut out going onto their website and uh, creating your finance agreements in Appulate. So um, again, less work. So keep going down. You can input your IPFS credentials right here. And I can show you how that works um, when we do the um, workflow training. Um, but I can also send you a webinar that we, my training counterpart, Carrie did. She's fantastic. Um, she went over our relationship with IPFS and how to, how it works on how to, um, do your billing with IPFS through Appulate. Okay. Okay. I use, um, I use Stonemark a lot. Are you familiar with him? I'm not. So the only one we've partnered with is Imperial. So mm -hmm. um, right now, that's the only one. If you use Imperial, 
you know, I know, I think they might have some pretty high rates these days, but I think. Oh gosh, I just did one yesterday. Most people do. 19.25. <laughs> yeah. It was crazy, but it is what it is, you mm -hmm. know, and, and it is true that, you know, the more premium they finance, the less the interest is. Of and this course. was a lot. So um, you would think people would look at that and say, yeah, you know, maybe I'll just set this up on three payments or something like that, you know, and so then you're not paying quite as much um, interest, but, you know, neither here nor there. The only reason I use Stonemark a lot is because I've just developed a really good relationship with the gentleman that I work with. And I mean, he gets stuff out just boom, boom, boom. And he knows exactly how we want that done. And you know, what, what our minimum down is, and it includes the taxes and fees mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but, but, but that doesn't mean I wouldn't use this because sometimes companies will send that actual um, premium finance agreement with the quote from, from them. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely set it up. Okay. All right. So that's really the biggest parts of the setup. So I'm actually going to steal the screen from you and I'm going to show you Loss Runner. Before okay. I do that. Give me just a second to open up my window. Okay. All right, so there are two ways to put your insured into Appulate. I will show you how to uplink your completed accord forms on our second training. Today, I'll show you how to manually add them in case you want to get in here quick to request loss runs on behalf of a new business prospect or um, an insured. So okay. you just click on add new customer. And really, you just go through the motions of manually typing whatever is relevant or whatever okay, you so want to Okay, so when I was writing, so where did you where did you get, oh, under insured tab? Yep, okay. so you go under the insured tab. So under your dashboard, you click add new customer or prospect. Mm -hmm. okay. And then you just start filling out um, this information manually. Okay. Whatever you want to include. Once you're good here, you just go towards the middle of your screen and click on this create button. Mm -hmm. This next page, you have to assign a line of insurance. So whatever you're going to work on or whatever um, line of business loss runs you're requesting. So for example, work comp. You can change the effective date if you need to. Just know that it automatically defaults to 30 days past the date that you manually add your insured. So a lot of times you probably will have to change this effective date if you need to. Okay. You can just click on the little calendar and change it to whatever you need to. Okay. This information, it's not required down here. So I just kind of skip out on it. Feel free to input that information if you want though. And then we're just going to click this continue button. So just a couple of things, this gold store tab you see in the upper left-hand corner, this mm -hmm. is your master insured tab. So it also um, where are where your contacts live. So if your insured ever moved their business or your contact changed their number, this is where you will go to change that information. Um, I'm just going to add my contact by clicking add new, I'll add myself for the sake of the day. And again, Feel free to be as a script or not thorough. It's really up to you what you want to add here mm -hmm. and save. You can have as many contacts as needed too. There's no cap okay. on that. This big tab right here where you see work comp, this is your submission tab. It's labeled with the line of business that you're working on, the effective date, and the current status of your submission. If you forget to change the effective date on that first screen, you can change it from right here as well. Just click on the date and you can change it to whatever you need it to be here as well. Okay. If you are working on multiple lines of business for this insured and it's not a package policy, they're mono lines. Let's say you also need to do a general liability quote. From right here, we need you just click on this little arrow, mm -hmm. create new request for quote or policy. And the same thing, we're just gonna add general liability.
And then now you have two lines of business. You can toggle back and forth between to do your submissions. If there is something that is duplicate in one of the lines of business on the other one, it will transfer into it. So you don't have to fill it out multiple times if it's the same oh. question. Okay. All right. And then the last thing I like to do, I like to add the contact to the main record to begin with in case I need to email them a questionnaire to fill out, if I need to send them something to sign, just so they're on the main record. So to the right hand side is this no main contact underline. I'm just mm -hmm. going to click on it and add myself as the contact. Okay. All right, so loss runs. We're gonna go to this left side to this legend over here and click on this loss runs tab. Mm -hmm. Right now, there is no insurance information in here. So we need to edit our prior carrier information. I'm gonna click on edit insurance history and this pop-up appears. So I'm gonna just start filling out. So maybe they were with Hartford. I am going to type in a little bit of Hartford and I'm gonna wait for this list to appear to choose from this list. The mm -hmm. reason why you have to choose from this list is because we have specific fax numbers and emails associated and attached to these markets. So you do have to choose from this list. Mm -hmm. Policy number is not required. Obviously, it's always helpful, but not every insured knows their policy number. Um, and let's say they were with travelers for a year. And then I'm just going to delete these two years because they're not relevant for me right now. Mm -hmm. You do have to fill this out year by year, even if they were with them for multiple years um, on this view. Oh, okay. But uh -huh. you click save and on this next page, it will combine on this page. Okay. So let's say you are the agent of record already and you have access to their travelers loss runs. So you just log into travelers, download their loss runs. You wanna attach them to Appulate to get ready for your submission. So what you do for travelers all the way to the right-hand side are these three little dots. We're just gonna upload our loss runs, pretty simple. But let's mm -hmm. say you're not the agent of record or you are the agent of record and you've only had them for like a year or two, but you have to go back to that prior agent and get updated loss runs to remarket this account. Well, difficult agents are out there. Sometimes they don't give you loss runs and it's extremely difficult to quote an account without loss runs. Mm -hmm. So what you can do in Appulate is you can bypass that agent and go straight to the market on behalf of the insured. So we're gonna use Hartford oh. for this example. Okay. All the way to the right hand side is this send loss runner button. We're going to click on this. And then from this, a pop up appears. So I'm going to go through this very thoroughly. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh -huh. The request type automatically defaults to letter of authorization. Okay. It's our most commonly used request type in our system, and it requires the insured to sign this because what this is, it's a letter from the insured directly to the carrier, giving the carrier permission to return loss runs to you as the agent. So again, it is completely cutting out that difficult agent and the insured is ultimately the client. So the carrier has to legally comply with this letter. If they push back and say, no, they have to go through the agent, push back even more and say, no, this is from the insured. You have to legally comply with this. Um, if that happens, it's usually somebody who is pretty green in that department and doesn't quite understand how it works yet. Mm -hmm. um, if you drop this request type down, we also have a broker of record letter, agency loss run request letter, and an insured loss run request letter. But in order to bypass an agent, I recommend using letter of authorization. Okay. So I'm gonna talk you through this one. So at the top, Appulate will populate your insured's information. If this is ever read, just click this little pencil. It'll tell you what's missing. It's followed by the market that you're requesting loss runs from, including this ad market contact. This okay. will be read every time because we are requiring you to choose where you wanna send this letter to. We're not gonna choose for you just because um, a lot of times it's based off of region line of business, it could differ, it, it differs agency to agency. So we are not choosing for you, we are making you choose. So if you drop this market contact down, we do have some fax numbers and an email address for Hartford in our system. Okay. If you are unsure where to send this to, we just tell people to contact their customer service. They're usually very helpful and can tell you where you need to send it based off of where your agency is located. Okay. 
if you have your own personal contact or fax number that you know you need to send your um, request to, it's not in our system, choose add new and you can add them and it will save for future use. Oh, okay. So once you click who you want to, where you want to send this to, click save and it'll take you back to this page. So once you choose where you want to send it to, back to the letter, it's followed by the policy number and the policy period for the insured. It concludes with the body of the letter itself, which provides the market with the return destination being yourself as the agent. So your name, your agency name, your name and your email address will go right here. Um, you can choose facts. People tend to not choose facts because that's kind of a dying thing these days. Mm -hmm. um, if you have your email address in here, this is how the market will return those loss runs to you. And then down below is your insured contact. If the, again, if this is red, just click the pencil. It'll tell you what's missing. Um, okay, so from here, you'll just click send. Um, once you click send, your insured will receive a mobile friendly link via email. Mobile friendly, they can open it up on their phone, tablet, computer, whatever electronic they use to um, whatever. They will click the link and electronically sign this. And I say electronically sign it because in order for this to work, they cannot print out the letter and sign it and return it to you. They have to click the link and electronically sign it because once they electronically sign it, Appulate automatically sends it to this destination that you confirmed in the letter. That's why I said it's very important you choose where you want this to go because once you click send, your hands are kind of uh, cleaned with this task. Appulate does everything else for you after you click send. Okay. Um, I do like to tell people to check this box. So let's say in seven days, you don't have those loss runs back from the market. Mm -hmm. Once you're insured finds it, in seven days, Appulate will send another signed letter out on your behalf. So again, less manual work on your part. Okay. So we're going to click send and click OK. Appulate tracks and timestamps everything related to loss runner. So if you're having a difficult time getting your insured to sign this, to the right-hand side is this little bell. It's just a little reminder to sign, and it is, you know, tracked and timestamped. So any, mm -hmm. you know, issues are taken care of by that. Um, once your insured signs the letter, this will update and say signed by insured. And then another item that says it's sent, oops, sorry, um, it's sent to this destination after it is signed. Mm -hmm. um, again, everything is tracked and timestamped. The only thing Appulate does not track is when you get those loss runs back. So in the letter, you confirmed your email address, and that is how you will get those loss runs back. Once you get those loss runs back through email, to shut off that automatic reminder, if you check that box um, to send signed letter, the another signed letter out on your behalf, a great way to just shut that off is to just attach your loss runs. Um, oh, also okay. attach your loss runs so you can get ready for your submission. So once you get those from Hartford to the right hand side, same as travelers, click those three little dots, update your or upload your loss runs. Oh, okay. and this also timestamps who uploads the loss runs and when. So if you and Miguel are kind of tag teaming an account, um, you're gone for a day or he's gone for a day, you work on something, upload loss runs for him, um, mm -hmm. vice versa, you can see who has done what. Okay. And that is loss runner. Do you have any questions on that? I don't think so. I mean, you know, I, I'm sure probably when the first time I go in here, I'll be sure. just, you know, blank <laughs> but I, I can I can see where the flow is there so that's that's all good and I like the fact that it's time stamped and you know keeping it accessible for both Miguel and I will yes. be helpful because then we can see what each one of us has done not trying to figure out well I wonder what or, or duplicating something so that's mm -hmm. good yes um, so I do have a question, not on loss runs, but, um, before, because it just popped in my head, mm -hmm. um, does Appulate, do you, does this system do a, um, does it, when you get a quote back from a company, uh -huh. does it create a proposal? Um, not right now that is being worked on to be released later this year. Um, we also are working on a quote comparison. So if you're marketing an account, to send out a quote comparison to your insured through Appulate as well. 
Oh, um, okay. So simple answer is no, not right now. Okay. It is coming though. We've had a lot of requests to it. And if you come in the system and you think something is a good idea and it's not there, let me know. We take agent feedback very seriously when people ask for things. We definitely try and deliver on um, the suggestions. Okay. Okay. So you think that will be coming this year then, huh? Um, yes, it'll probably be part of our next release. It, it is something being worked on. There's some technical issues, um, but our engineering team is definitely working on something mm -hmm. in that okay. manner. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Yes. Because we have a proposal um, feature in, in our management system, but it's, Miguel is working on getting it fine-tuned. There's just mm -hmm. too much stuff there. You know, yep. there's it's just you send all that out and I mean it's about as bad as sending out an application you know mm -hmm. the insurer looks at it and goes like what the heck are you sending me yep <laughs> so, um, yep I mean you're an agent for a reason that's why they come to you for your business for their business so um I, I definitely get that one place I want to show you because I I don't have any more to show you today um okay. regarding an appulate but a good thing for you to check out is in this help tab up top uh -huh. This video tutorial section. So these are previously oh. recorded training videos. Okay. Um, if you are testing out Loss Runner, you're not sure, of course, you can contact me. I'm happy to help you. But there is mm -hmm. also a recording in here that walks you through Loss Runner. So you can watch it and kind oh, it'll, okay. it'll guide you through the steps. Yeah. As okay. well as adding your markets or sure. any other, th there's a, quite a few in here. So if you want to watch some things in here, um, feel free to do that. I will yeah. go over a lot of these videos in our next training. But Well, this is nice because if you're in something and you're kind of stuck, you yes. can, you know, especially if you're working on the weekend, which I do a lot, yep. um, a person would be able to go in and just kind of pick up where you need, pick the information that you need and go forward then. That's good. Okay. Yes. Um, and then last question. So you and Jack are users right now, but you mentioned McGill. Does he need to be a user as well? Yeah, um, yeah probably. Um, because I mean, he could use Jack's login, but I don't really like to do that. Okay. Um, I Is would just Jack going to be utilizing this system? You know, I think he will eventually. Okay. Um, because he wants to learn the system. He's just, he's just, I think he's kind of intimidated. You know, I always tell him you can't break the computer and you can't, you can't <laughs> break the application. So I think if I, if I can work with him, he probably will be inclined to, to do some things in there. Okay. Um, and and I, I get where he's coming from as a prior agent. It is hard to change how you do your submissions and your yeah. workflow because you just yeah. get into a comfortable habit of things. So right. I, I, I get that. Um, right. I asked because you signed up for two users. So if you wanted me to add a third user, I would need to go back to Dave and talk to him about a third user because that puts you into a different tier. Well, you know what, before you do that, Jessica, let me talk to Jack, because okay. if anything, Jack could actually log in on mine, mm -hmm. and we could just switch Jack's to Miguel. Okay, um, I can show you how to do that. Um, if you want to share your screen with me again, I can show you um, how to do that. Sure. I think that would be the best thing to do. Okay. Um, simply because I know that Jack would be in it when I'm not. Okay. And, um, and we don't really need to pay for three seats when Jack would be so limited. Okay. We could just use the same login. So I definitely would... get that. Okay. So let's scroll all the way back up to the top. Okay. And we're going to go under setup again and users. Okay. So you can delete Jack or edit and change that to um, to the right hand side. It's a little person with a pencil here. Yes, okay. um, you can change that and edit that for Miguel. Okay, so we'll just put Miguel in here, right? Yep. Okay. Oops. And his email is. Okay. Um, I think you forgot the R in his last name. I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay. Um, you can change his user role to just a user instead of an admin if you want. That way he doesn't have, I don't know if you want him to have access to everything that you have access no, to. No, I think we're just a user. Okay. Um, and then just scroll all the way down and save. Okay. And then what about his login credential? I can send okay. him a new, um, I'll send him a reset link right now. I am okay. In. Yeah. And he, he actually won't be in the office again until Friday. Okay. So that's fine. So if he'll have that, I'll remind him of that when he, when he gets in. And then Jack would use my login credentials to get in there. Yes. And that would be my email and my password that I just set up. So that yep. would be fine. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, okay. Well, that's it for today. I will send you my calendar link to book um, your second training. And if you want okay. Miguel to be a part of that, because I'm going to show how the workflow goes and how to do the submissions and applications and stuff like that. Feel yeah, we, no, he's in, he's in the office normally. This week he's working Friday because he's at a conference in Las Vegas today and tomorrow. But um, he's usually there on Mondays and Wednesdays. Okay. So um, I'd like to schedule it on the days that he's in. Okay. Um, if you have time on those two days, I'm not sure. Yeah. But just send me your calendar and I'll look at it. And, okay. Yeah, yeah. Next week on Monday and Wednesday, I am pretty wide available. I have one meeting so far on Monday at 8 30 in the morning. So, okay. Um, All right. Well, I'll look at that as soon as you send it and select a time and then I'll get it back to you quickly. Okay. Perfect. I will um, get this. Uh, video converted into a YouTube link because it's too large to send via email. So okay. let me convert it. Um, it might take a day to get it back to you, but I yeah, will send you my fine. link right now. Sure. Okay. All right. Well, All right. well thank uh, you, Jessica. I'm yeah. excited to use this because, you know, these applications when you, I, I mean, this will just, I think this, I think once I get into the swing of things, it'll be a really nice um, application to work with. Yes, it does, you know, it does take a little time and um, effort to, you know, train yourself on how to use the system, but that's what I'm here for. So if you have any questions, please contact me. I am happy to jump on a Zoom call and work through something with you if you need okay. help. Okay. All right. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Have a great yeah. rest of your day and I'll and talk you, to you soon. You, you also. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Bye. Bye now.